Custer, take it away. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Certainly want to welcome you to this official press conference kickoff for Javante Tank Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz. I'm Brian Custer, the host of Showtime Championship Boxing. And you know, this unique event pits champion versus champion. And, and it's rare in our sports sometimes when you have world titles in two weight classes at stake, but that's what we have here because the winner of this fight walks out of the ring with the WBA world title strap at 130 pounds and 135 pounds. Although the weight limit for this fight is at 130 pounds. And this fight features two of the sports most exciting fighters and punchers. You've got on one hand, Gervonta Tank Davis, a two-time world champion, 95% knockout ratio, a guy unbeaten, explosive, powerful, taking on a four-division world champion in Leo Santa Cruz, a man who always overwhelms his opponents, it seems, with his punch output and activity. Gervonta, the world champion at 135 pounds, Leo, the champion at 130 pounds. And you can see this fight live on Showtime pay-per-view Halloween night, October 31st, 9 p.m. Eastern. It comes your way 6 p.m. Pacific time. And it's all going down deep in the heart of Texas at the Alamo Dome. Tickets went on sale on Monday, but you can get your tickets through Ticketmaster.com. It's a four-fight card because we'll begin the night with Isaac Cruz taking on Diego Magdaleno. And then you'll see the return of former world champion Regis Progre, who's taking on the unbeaten Juan Oraldez. And then in the co-main, you're going to see the WBA super lightweight champion, Mario Barrios, putting his title on the line against Cowboy Ryan Carl. And, of course, the main event, Tank Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz. This fight fits the Showtime Championship boxing mantra of the best fighting the best. And the man who has been beating that drum ever since he came to the network is the president and general manager of Showtime Sports. I call him boxing's best friend. Here's Steven Espinosa. Thanks very much, Brian. We are just coming off two thrilling performances about 10 days ago by Jamel Charlo and Jamal Charlo. We're again reminded that in order for boxing to be at its best, to thrive and grow and be vibrant as we all want it to, the best fighters must fight the best fighters. We saw Jamel and Jamal take those big risks a couple of weeks ago, each emerged and elevated their status and maybe more importantly, delivered some really exciting fights for the fans. And it's reminding, you know, Tough fights matter, matchmaking matters. It's good for the fans, it's good for the sport. And that's why we're so excited to bring everyone out there, this matchup of Hank Davis and Leo Santa Cruz, one of the most anticipated, most exciting matchups of the year. We're once again partnering with Mayweather Promotions uh, on this exciting event. Um, the partnership of Showtime and Mayweather Promotions has uh, brought more than a little bit of excitement in the past. And we're again coming together on this important event and we have a lot in store for you. We've been working with TGB and they have been tremendous support on this event. And we know that we're going to be bringing fans who are there in the Alamo Dome and there in front of their televisions, one of the most exciting uh, fight nights of the year. We have power and speed and athleticism versus experience and a pressure fighting. We have a boxer with one of the sport's highest knockout rate versus a fighter who's one of the busiest, highest pressure fighters in the sport. I give credit to both Tank and Leo for taking this fight, for taking these big risks. And in fact, I take give credit to everybody on this card. Um, we are thrilled with the undercard. We've seen Mario Barrios uh, fight on Showtime before. 
He will be defending his title against a, a very entertaining fighter in Ryan Carl. Uh, we've seen Regis Prograde uh, mature through Showbox. We are thrilled to have him back, and he's got his hands full in a matchup with Mayweather Promotions' own Juan Horaldez, who has also developed on Showbox. And, of course, the opener, Isaac Cruz and Diego Magdaleno, is another fight, uh, fight fan's dream fight. So altogether, you know, there's one thing we can be sure of with this card. It will be exciting. This is a great clash of styles in the main event. It's supported by some very good undercard fights. And once again, you know, we come together with Mayweather Promotions and TGB to bring fight fans the best that the sport has to offer. Brian. Okay, Stephen, appreciate it. And as Stephen pointed out, you know, to put on an event of this magnitude, you've got to have some great promotion. And we've got two of the best in the business uh, with this fight card. He mentioned Mayweather Promotions. And of course, the president of Mayweather Promotions, by the way, on the Hall of Fame ballot uh, this year. He's also the pound for pound pay-per-view king, known as TBE, none other than Floyd Money Mayweather himself, who, by the way, the promoter of Javante Davis, he joins us now as well. Floyd? Hey, everybody. I want to say uh, thank you to uh, Showtime. I want to thank everyone, you know, for showing up uh, for this call, uh, for the Zoom. You guys have all been great. Um, you know, this is not about me. This is not about my record. Uh, this is about uh, these two young, hungry lions. Um, Tank, I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm so proud of you uh, for the things you have accomplished in just a, a short period of time. And Leo, um, I got to commend you also. Uh, uh, you try to do record-breaking things, go uh, to a, 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 what I think a, uh, the, your fourth weight class. So both of you guys, I commend you both, you know, for making this fight. And I'm, I'm glad that we was able to uh, take this fight uh, to the Alamo Dome so we can at least have some fans because uh, this fight needs to have fans. And I want everybody, I mean, uh, to tune in. The, the people that can't make it, I want you guys to tune in because we know Leo is always going to bring excitement a uh, you know, very, very high volume tank. I mean, he's going he's gonna to bring that power with that speed. So when you bring these two together, you get nothing but a collision. Um, so, and the people that's in San Antonio, you guys must, I, I know we can't have a, a, a full crowd, but you guys must show up or these guys can show out. These guys do it uh, for the fans. These guys love the fans. And I'm proud just to be a part of, of uh, such an event. You know, um, when Tank was very, very young, I told him um, someday he will be so. Well, someday he will be fighting on pay per view, and now we're here. And Leo, no, I've always been a fan of his, also. And um, like I said before, both of you guys deserve it. The fans deserve it, and um, I want you guys to go out there and be at your best. And I want to say uh, thank you to my business partner, uh, Leonard Ellaby. You're doing a hell of a job. You've been doing a hell of a job. I'm proud of you, uh, Mr. Al Heyman, a father figure, uh, one of my closest friends. Uh, you're doing a hell of a job. Brian, keep up the great work as far as you're commentating. I'm watching you. You're getting better each and every day. And Stephen, I couldn't, I couldn't choose a better network uh, to, give me a, uh, to give me the deal that I wanted years ago. So I'm proud of everybody that's on this call. You fighters, both of you guys, I know you guys are in tip-top shape. And just go out there and get a fans what they want to see, excitement. You know, I've been here a thousand times. And um, I'm pushing because I want you guys to do uh, record-breaking numbers as far as when it comes to pay-per-view. So I, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's on the Zoom call. I want to say thank you to the fighters. Thank you, Floyd. Appreciate you, brother. And again, as Floyd said, it's going to be in San Antonio. You show up, the fighters will show out. Uh, as Floyd mentioned, you see him uh, with us as well, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions, Leonard Ellaby. He is with us as well, as well as the head of TGB Promotions and Tom Brown, a Hall of Famer. Uh, those guys will be available uh, for any questions members of the media have uh, once we're done. So let's hear from the fighters. That's what we're all here for. For Let's hear from Javante Davis 
and Leo Santa Cruz. Let's start, though, with the WBA Super Featherweight Champion of the World, and that is Leo Santa Cruz, a man who has 39 fights, 37 of them victories, just one defeat, one draw, but he's also got 19 knockouts. He is a four-division world champion. And, guys, we would like for you to just open up Tell us how camp has been going for this fight, uh, your thoughts of fighting in front of fans, and, and give us an opening statement. Leo, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Brian. You know, I feel really great. You know, uh, camp has been going great. I feel really strong. I'm very motivated. My dad's been here with me. My brother, they've been helping me out. So, you know, this is the best camp I've ever been at. I'm the, I'm doing the best camp of my life. Because we know we have a hard fight. I think the hardest fight in my career. We're facing a you know hard hitting fighter. He's got great skills, and he's you know been trained by the best ever, Floyd Mayweather. I know he's gonna come with everything. So, you know, my determination is to go out there, beat Tank Davis, and I could say I beat one of the best, and I beat you know a fighter that's been trained by Mayweather. So. That for me, that's gonna be something really big, really great. So I'm just, you know, motivated uh, here in the gym. I wanna go out there, give the fans a great fight. Um, yes, you know, there's a big opportunity for me to become a, you know, pay-per-view superstar and that's what I want. I know there's opportunity for Tank David too. He's gonna come with everything. And we were both gonna go out there and just give a great fight for the fans. And, you know, I just hope that we both come out, you know, healthy from the fight and we just give a great fight for the fans. El contagio en inglés. Estoy contento, estoy muy motivado para esta pelea. Sé que es la pelea más grande de mi vida, este, la más dura de mi carrera, yo pienso. Y sabemos que vamos contra un peleador fuerte que viene con todo, tiene este, buenos golpes. Este, y pues es uno de los mejores en la división. So, estamos bien motivados, queremos esta pelea. Mi papá estaba en campamento conmigo, so, nos sentimos bien fuertes, este, bien entrenados, buena condición. Y vamos en las mejores condiciones de nuestras carreras porque sabemos que tenemos un rival muy fuerte. Pero, como he dicho, esos rivales que son mejores, que son muy fuertes, sacan lo mejor de mí y es lo que queremos. Este, que saquen lo de mejor de mí y hacer una buena pelea para todos los fans. Espero que todos los fans nos, nos miren, estén atentos, mirándonos ahí en vivo en San Antonio, Texas, o en vivo por pay-per-view. Nosotros estamos listos para una gran pelea, una guerra, y vamos a dejar todo arriba del ring. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you, Leo Santa Cruz. And now, uh, let me introduce a two-time world champion, 23-0. and 0. He's got 22 knockouts. Again, that's a 95% knockout per percentage. He calls himself the one. Here's Javante Tank Davis. How you doing? Um, first, I want to correct, you know, Brian. Uh, I am actually a three-time world champion. Um, as far as, you know, getting ready for this fight, I feel as though um, I wanted to bring my uh, camp to, you know, Las Vegas, you know, and, and you know, um, train more than, you know, eight weeks or six week camp, you know, because I know that I'm, you know, fighting a, a, a top notch fighter. We know Leo come to fight. He's, uh, he bring pressure, you know, he, he's, he's a um, high volume fighter, puncher, you know. So I, I brought my camp here, you know, to, the, um, more so, you know, stay focused on just boxing, you know, being close with, you know, um, my Mayweather team and as far as, you know, um, having uh, Floyd Mayweather in the gym more with me, you know, hands on and things like that, you know, so um, I'm definitely, you know, grateful for, for uh, you know, Mayweather, uh, Floyd Mayweather for to be in my uh, camp and things like that, that's just to help me on and tweak things, you know, uh, make me be able to fight better, you know, and as far as, you know, uh, my spawn partners, you know, we got over five spawn partners, you know, just to make sure I'm well prepared. You know, I want to thank my personal team, you know, um, Lauren, Lauren Sabakin, Calvin Ford, you know, uh, Russ, and also my uh, guys that, you know, box with me, you know, just to keep me on my daily day you know, working hard, you know, we definitely working hard just so we can, you know, get a fans, you know, a big, a silent fight, you know, because at the end of the day, um, the fans won, you know, we got two elite fighters going head up, you know, and, and I'm bringing my best, so, you know, uh, 
come October the 31st, it, it could be a, um, you know, one of them pay-per-view fights that you definitely will remember. You know, so we definitely want y'all to tune in. If you can't make it, make sure y'all y'all order the fight on um, Showtime pay-per-view. And uh, I'm ready. You know, I'm grateful to be in this position. So I definitely want to thank Showtime, Bryant, um, Mayweather Promotion, Floyd Mayweather, Leonard, you know, my personal team, uh, Calvin Ford, you know, um, Lawrence Shavakin, um, Russ, and also Coach Kenny that can't be here because we have another fight that's fighting a week before before me. But we are as one, you know, and um, thank you, uh, Leo, Leo, for, you know, you were stepping up and calling me out, you know, the the test yourself, you know, just, that just make, make me feel like, you know, um, you you have a lot of heart, you know, and you want to fight the best, you know. So I feel as though um, the winner out of this should be on uh, up there in pound for pound, if not uh, the top five, I believe. So um, I told her the 31st, the fans won, you know, and the winner takes it all. Fantastic. And you're right, Tank, three-time world champion. My mistake. You won it at 130 twice and now champion at 135. Uh, Leo, let me, first question will come to you because a lot has been made of this fight of Tank's power and many people believing that could be a deciding factor in this fight. How have you prepared so that Tank's power won't be a factor for you in this fight? Yeah, the way I have prepared is, you know, I've been sparring with bigger guys, uh, fighters that are fight at like, they're like a 145, 147 right now. So that thing that's going to prepare me to take their punches, you know, when I'm, I'm right there with Tank Davis, I'm going to be able to take his punches. I've been working a little bit my neck and everything and just, you know, eating a little bit more better and just, you know, uh, just go out there and hopefully, you know, I could take his punches. Fantastic. Uh, Gervonta, let me, let me come to you because you talked about you've been basically having camp there in Vegas alongside uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. You said he's been a lot more hands-on. Is it be, ha, Have you done that because of the person you're fighting and Leo Santa Cruz, the respect that you have for him? And what, have, what nuggets have you learned from the great Floyd Mayweather uh, for this fight that he's given you? Um, I, I, I want to say he, he – Floyd definitely been more, not, I don't want to say more hands-on now because he always been hands-on for us, like, not training, but, like, telling me what to do inside the ring. And even, you know, we could say for the Gamboa fight, he was actually damn near in the corner. Well, he was in the corner. So I don't want to say more hands-on. I want to say just um, just being there as far as, you know, telling me this is my first pay-per-view fight, you know, he – coaching me through it, it's just a lot, you know, um, leading up just to be, paper, I mean, being on pay-per-view because of the crowd, you got the, you got, you got a lot of pressure on you. You got to just got to live up to fighting on pay-per-view because you want to be able to fight on pay-per-view, not just once, but continue to fight on, on pay-per-view. So um, it just all around the board, just coaching me, being there when, you know, I'm down or anything like that to be able to push me. And because he been there before, it's stuff that my coach can tell me. It's stuff that he, uh, Floyd Mayweather can tell me that because he been there that my coach can't, you know? So it definitely, um, we've been hands on, uh, hand in hand with both of them, you know, my coach and, you know, Floyd and things like that. And I'm just, I'm just grateful to be in the position I am today. So I, I definitely want to thank my team um, and the sky's the limit for me. Uh, Tank, let me follow up on that because I saw that there was a lot of social media uh, traffic, not only uh, towards you, but uh, the Mayweather people. And the, 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 a lot of the social media traffic was about weight. And considering that this fight is at 130, let's be real clear. Fight at 130, will Tank Davis make the weight? Javante Davis definitely make, will make the weight. There were other people who were, who were tweeting and, and coming back at you saying, well, if Tank makes 130, he'll probably be too dehydrated for the fight. What's your response to that? Um, we just got to wait and see. You know, um, 
this camp been great for me. You know, I, I'm already at weight, as you can see. I'm not big. You know, um, I'm just been working hard. Our, our camp is not, you know, worrying about weight. Our camp is worrying about Leo Santa Cruz and giving them a great fight come October the 31st. That's what we worry about and, and getting them big checks that my team that, you know, put me in a position where as though I could be able to get them big checks. So um, you're just ready. <laughs> I love it. Spoken like a true Mayweather fighter. I like that. Uh, Leo, <laughs> let me come to you because, Leo, uh, you, you did an interview with ESPN Deportes, and in it you said, talking about Tank, you said, quote, he's strong for the first four or five rounds. We have to be careful that he doesn't catch us with any of his big shots. But after that, he gets tired. And that's where my experience comes in. I can go right after him and drown him and pressure him. This is how this fight must be. You still stand by that, Leo? Yeah, of course, you know. Tank Davis, he's from the first, you know, five rounds. I know he's also dangerous and, uh, you know, in every round into the last round, he's still going to be dangerous. But I think the most dangerous rounds are going to be one through six. Those are the ones, you know, he has the most power and everything. Like they say, you have to, I have to watch out in all of the rounds into the last bell rings. You know, I have to watch out because he could catch me in any, any round. But, like, in the first rounds, if I see he catches out, I'm going to go on top of him, pressure, try to break him down, get him tired. Because um, a fighter, when he has another fighter in, in front of him, putting the pressure that, you know, frustrates him and gets him tired. Mm. Uh, Gervonta, what's your reply then to the critics who say Tank Davis is basically a first-half fighter? You get him in, into the second half of, of the fight, and then your chances of winning exponentially goes up. Most of them don't lead through the second uh, part of the fight. They all go down one, one through six, probably seven. As we know, as Pedraza, he brought the pressure, and he got stopped the seventh round. And we could say my last fight, I knocked Gamboa in the 12th round, you know? So um, they can say whatever they want, but they're going to have to prove it once we get in there, October the 31st and so and fall on. Uh, Leo, listen, if you're victorious Halloween night against a young, powerful, explosive champion like Tank, what should the boxing world be saying about Leo Santa Cruz that they haven't said already? I, I think don't you, that I deserve to be in the pound for pounds, you know, 10, top 10. Uh, if I beat Tank Davis, because, you know, Tank Davis is a great fighter. He's one of the best out there. I think he, nobody wants to fight him. And, you know, I, just, I chose to fight him. I picked him. I said I wanted to fight him. My team got that fight. And so I, if I beat him, I mean, October 31st, I think I deserve to be in the top 10 pound for pounds and one of the best. Mm. Tank, same question to you. You walk away with both of those belts at 130 and 135. What should the boxing world be saying about Javante Davis? I agree with Leo. You know, um, the winner should be, you know, at least in the top 10 pound for pound. Um, probably one of the, uh, I want to say the smallest, you know, um, I want to say the smallest, uh, Besides, what's the what's the guy name? Monster. No, the um. No, no, no. I forget his name. Um, but anyway, uh, just you know, top pound for pound, uh, one through ten pound for pound. Um, the one to take it all, they be a champion at one thirty and one thirty five. Uh, I think there's you know um. Most I'm focused on just getting the win. You know, yeah. I let the uh, the fans and you know, make that opinion on the fight and things like that where, they, where I stand. And I know where I stand as myself and my team. So it really doesn't matter to me. I just want to get the win and, and get a get a win impressively. Before we open this up to the members of the media, I'll start with you, uh, Tank. Uh, you're victorious. You walk away with the belts. Where does your future reign hold? At, at 130 or 135? Both. I believe 130... You know, if we got a best, best uh, top dog at 130, I can stay at 130. If if it's a right business move to move to 35, then I definitely move to 35. But right now, we focus on Leo, and uh, becoming that pay-per-view star. And Leo, same question to you. 
Uh, you're victorious. Where is your future reign at 130, 135? I think the same thing, you know, my future at 130. If I win, I want to stay at 130, defend the title, unified. And if there's another opportunity at 135 and it makes sense, I'll move up to 135. Fantastic. I know there are a number of members of the media that have joined us, and they certainly want to ask you questions. All you have to do, members of the media, hit the raise our hand icon there in the Zoom. Uh, Chris de Blasio, he's our VP of Communications at Showtime Sports. He will acknowledge you, and we will bring you in so you can ask your questions. Chris, uh, let's bring in members of the media so they can ask. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we'll start with Keith Eidick from BoxingScene.com. Keith, unmute and ask your question. Uh, my question is for Floyd. Floyd, uh, you and Leonard have said for over a year now that Gervonta is ready for pay-per-view. What makes this the right time and the right opponent to test his pay-per-view value? I'll let, I'm going to let, let, let Leonard uh, speak because I already spoke in the beginning. He have not had a chance to speak, so I'm going to let the, uh, <laughs> the CEO of Mayweather Promotions answer that question. Leonard? Thank you. Uh, it's a terrific fight. It's a, it's a clash of styles. Leo brings, uh, he's a nonstop puncher. Um, when he, he's, he's relentless when he gets in there. He comes forward. You have Tank, who uh, has the power, the youth, and the speed. This one makes for a terrific, terrific matchup. You have two young fighters who want to give the fans the best that's out there. And in Leo's case, we, we must remember, what really surprised me about this, Leo really, really pushed for this fight. So obviously he sees something in Tank's style that he really feels as though he can take advantage of. You yeah, know, but also Len Leonard, talk talk to the um, talk to him. He wants to know really about the guy Keith wants to know about the pay per view. Uh, he said, you know, we kept on talking about eventually Tank was going to be on pay per view. Uh, why is this fight on pay per view now, and why is it so important right now? That's what he basically going to know about. Right, and, and it's very important because the timing couldn't be better. You have these two young fighters who are ready to give the fans an exciting, exciting fight as, as it relates to Tank. Tank is one of the biggest draws in boxing right now. He's become a huge attraction. He's been able to sell out venues in the UK. Um, he's been able to sell out fights on the East Coast, down South, you know, in, in California. And so the timing of this couldn't be better. As it relates to Leo Santa Cruz, he's a four division champion. He comes to fight. He gives the fans exciting, exciting fights. And again, this is what the fans want to see. And the timing couldn't be better. Well, I think, well, I mean, I look at it like this. I feel like um, the reason why I said he's ready for pay-per-view is because um, his fans, his, his fan base is growing. And um, the demographics is, is getting, getting, getting bigger. But Leo, uh, you know, as far as on the West Coast and, and in Texas, Los Angeles and, and, and certain other places, Leo Santa Cruz have a huge following. So uh, this fight can only be on pay-per-view, which, I mean, my opinion. Well, I just have one more question for you. Will you have a more active role on fight night? Will you work Gervonta's corner, or how is that going to go? Um, you know, I've, I've spoke, I spoke, I haven't spoke to Calvin yet, but in the gym, me and Calvin works hand-to-hand -hand for those that don't know who, who Calvin is, uh, that's Tank's uh, trainer. And uh, me and Calvin, we speak, we work together in the gym. You know, sometimes I have to leave and, and fly fly away to take care of business. But when I'm back, um, I'm there giving, you know, uh, just pointers, um, talking to him about pay-per-view and how things work. Because sometimes when a guy is in a boxing gym and he, he's, he's had a hard work, you know, a hard work throughout that day, uh, sometimes a guy don't want to uh, work. I mean, as far as he don't want to do certain interviews and certain things like that, but you have to because that's a part of the job. That's a part of you being a champion. That's a part of being. Uh, that's a part of pay per view. That's a part, you know. Um, and when we invest in a fight like this, we want these guys uh, to give us a hundred percent because we're giving a hundred percent. So uh, once again, I'm proud of uh, uh, both competitors. And I just want to tell both of you guys, uh, just keep up the great work. Thank you, Floyd. Thank you, Leonard. I have a quick question for, uh, for Leo. Leo, uh, you know, Gervonta has said that no issue at all. He's going to make weight on uh, October 30th. 
What are your thoughts on that? Or is there any concern on your part that he will not make 130? No, there's no concerns. I mean, I think he's going to make weight. He's been training really hard. It looks like, you know, he's in good shape. And like I said, uh, the last fight when he didn't make weight, I think it was because it was uh, Thanksgiving Day. It was Christmas. So, you know, for a fighter, it's hard not to eat during those times. You want you see the food and everything you want to eat. So I think that was the issue last time. But for this time, I think he's going to come ready and I think he's going to make weight. Thank you, Leo. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Keith. We're going to take our next question from San Antonio, John Whistler. John, on mute. You can go ahead with your question. We can't, we can't hear John. Hello? Stand by here. We'll, just, we'll go to our next question. Let's go to Brian Campbell with CBSSports.com. Can you hear me now? Oh, there you are, John. Thank you. Hey, hi, hi, John Whistler. Hey, my first time, so they're with no me. No problem. Is Steven, is Steven still there? I'm here. Yeah. Steven, I wanted yeah. to know how you landed at the Alamo Dome. And were there other venues that you considered? Um, you know, that, that's actually a, a, a better question for Tom and uh, for, okay. for Tom Brown at TGB and for Leonard and Floyd of Mayweather Promotion. Okay. Tom, how you doing? Hey, John. See, the last time I was with you, about five years ago, you told me you retired. Well, yeah, I have. <laughs> Semi. <laughs> No, the, the, it was important. It was important. Fighters are just like fighters. They never retire. <laughs> yeah. It was important for Floyd and Leonard and all of us involved at Showtime to, to have fans at a fight of this magnitude. So uh, we started looking where we could possibly go, and Texas was the best place. And uh, uh, it was still difficult with so many sports going on at this time because of the pandemic. There's, there's a flood of sports, and the Alamo Dome was open. It's the right venue. We're able to, to sit it up where we'll have social distancing. We, we've got pods set up in, in groups of two, four, and six, and there'll be uh, the aisles will be six feet apart. It, it's just the right fit for a fight like this. And so we're, uh, we're excited to come back to such a great fight town. You've been associated with the Dome before, haven't you, in other fights? Well, if you remember years ago, we did uh, a Zuma Nelson and Leha down there. Yeah, yeah, you were associated with that. What do you like about this dome? I, I've always loved the dome, and you know, and you can you can space it out on a fight like this during the pandemic, where we can we can get you know fifteen to eighteen thousand fans in there, and and make it a great night. And it's just hey, look at San Antonio is a great fight town. I'm just so happy we're able to, to come there for the fans of San Antonio. And John. Um... I, I, I will say this, though, that, that Tom has gone through details. Um, San Antonio is a great fight town. They're, they're great fight fans. There's a big history. You've got not just hometown fighters like, like you know, Jesse James Leha, but, um, you know, you've had historic fights there. You know, Showtime has been there. There's been big pay-per-view fights there. The fans there support boxing. And so uh, we couldn't have picked a, uh, you know, the promoters couldn't have picked a better place to go. Um, my plan because you know that's the city that has supported boxing for decades we took we, we brought laura smith down there too that's right yep what's that laura versus isha smith a couple of years ago okay, well, okay thank you very much thank you john let's go to uh brian campbell with cbssports.com brian Thanks, everyone. Uh, my first question is for Leo. Uh, obviously, you're moving up in weight against arguably, you know, one of the biggest punchers in the entire sport. What was the advice or any concerns from your father and your brother in accepting this fight? No, the biggest concern is, you know, that, you know, make sure he makes weight. And I think that's not going to be no problem. He's going to make weight. That was the biggest concern. And, it's, you know, to watch out for his power, you know, because we know that Tank's a heavy hitter. He's going to come out and try to knock me out. But, you know, we were working here in the gym how to get avoid those big shots, not to get caught with those big shots, and just be smart. I, got, I know I got to fight a perfect fight, and that's what we're going to try to do. Thank you. Uh, Floyd, I wanted to go to you and say uh, we talked before about knowing when a fighter's brand is ready for pay-per-view. Fifteen years ago, you made your debut as a headliner against Arturo Gatti. 
are there any similarities in your eyes to where to where Tank's brand is now and who he is as a fighter in person to where you were entering the Gotti fight? Um, well, you know, um, I believe in Tank. You know, I believe in him ever since he's been, you know, a young kid. And he's still a, he's still a young kid to me, but uh, but he's also I mean, he's a he's still a kid in my eyes. But he's we know he's an adult. He's a he's a young man, but um, I. Well, I still see that young kid, and I just told him, I told him someday you will be on pay-per-view, and it's going to come real fast, and when it comes, be ready. Um, it's a little different now. You know, when I faced Arturo Gatti, we didn't have social media. We didn't have uh, the, the different social media outlets. We, you know, we only had, um, you know, I was, pr I was pushing and promoting. I think my first pay-per-view, the first time I went out there, I think I'd done some pretty cool numbers. I'd done over 300, probably close to 400. Uh, a thousand homes, uh, my first time out. But, um, you know, these two guys probably, uh, can do, uh, can, can, can beat that. The reason why they can beat that because, um, like I said before, it's, it's totally different now. We didn't have the social media outlets at that particular time. And, uh, hopefully we can get a million buys, two million buys, uh, anything is possible. Like I said before, with the different outlets that we have. In today's time, but both of these guys deserve to be on pay-per-view, and um, you know I'm not here to knock their skills, but um, these guys, I want both of these guys to go out there and be at their best and keep pushing it, so we can do record-breaking numbers. My last question is for Tank. You've knocked out so many guys early, where we don't know in some ways how great of a boxer you are. This Leo fight could push you the distance. How much have you not had to show yet? that you have from the standpoint outside of the power punching, just being a technician inside the ring? Um, a lot, you know, uh, I, I, I think that, you know, Leo gonna bring the best out of me um, come October the 31st. And uh, we just gotta wait and see, you know, I've been working hard each and every day on uh, sparring bigger guys, sparring sp smaller guys, just to, to prepare myself all around the board, you know, um, for Leo, you know, we know Leo coming to fight He's he he he's want to say he's strong as far as endurance and things like that. So I'm definitely working hard. You know, it's not even just about you know um, fighting Leo. It's about the whole package. I want to give the fans a great show. I want to put on put on you know a great show in front of being my first pay per view fight. You know, I I want to not let my team down for pit me up against you know this task that was in front of me and, and it's. Not just Leo, it's pay-per-view, and it's definitely the fans. You know, I just want to give, um, you know, everybody, you know, um, a great show. You know, and, um, it's going to be a spooky night. <laughs> thanks, everyone. <laughs> Very good. All right, thanks, Brian. Let's go to Childs Walker, uh, Baltimore Sun. Childs? Yeah, hey, this is, this is for Gervonta. Um, you had built so much momentum last year, not just in terms of the fights, but in terms of the crowds you were drawing. Um, how difficult has this year been just with, with, you know, all the waiting and, you know, not, not maybe knowing when, when this was going to happen between the pandemic and everything else? I believe as, as a, a, a professional, um, you, you got to be ready. You know, you got to be, you know, got to be able to, you know, um, adapt to whatever um, come, you know, uh, not just a, a life lesson, you know, um, I've been working out, you know, for, you know, for three months and things like that, you know, uh, every day just to prepare for this, you know, so it just, um, I'm, I'm more, more grateful to be in this position than anything, you know, uh, forget whatever happened, you know, behind me. I'm just so focused on what's in front of me and that's getting past Leo and that's putting on a great performance in front of the fans. You know, uh, I want to be able to go back in the locker room and, you know, hug Floyd Mayweather, hug uh, Leonard, my personal team, uh, Lauren, Calvin Ford, and, and the rest of the boxes that actually train with me. So um, I, I'm just thankful and I'm grateful to be in this position. This position. So it's um, sky's the limit for me and I'm ready. Well, and, and, and I guess for, for Leonard, for Leonard and Floyd as well, I mean, what, what have you kind of been telling him throughout the year to kind of help him get through you know, the, the, the waiting for this? Um, well, Leonard has been speaking to Tank, you know, uh, <clears throat> Leonard has been speaking to Tank, I think the last 
the last year, you know, I still give him pointers, you know, because, you know, he has a, a daughter that he spends a lot of time with. And he, of course, you know, he's in a position to where he can, he can travel a lot now. And he's doing a lot of different things, which I'm proud of that I'm able to put him in a position, you know, to be a multi-millionaire. So um, Leonard's been, you know, uh, doing a lot of communicating with Tank as far as through the last year. You know, um, I, I, I've, I've, I'm, all, I'm always going to be, you know, hands-on as far as getting, you know, talking to him about life lessons and what he can do to become better inside the ring as well as outside the ring and just talking to him about not making the same mistakes that I made. So Leonard can kind of touch on that subject. Yeah. Um, over the last year, um, I've seen uh, Tank mature a great deal. One of the biggest things that, you know, he got out of his comfort zone was coming to Las Vegas. You know, he's used to training in Baltimore, and that showed, you, you know, where he was ready for this next step because he's come out here, he's been completely focused. Everything that we've asked of him, he's done. He's in tremendous shape. He wants to go out there and put on the best performance of his life and come October the 31st. Um, I'm very confident that's exactly what's going to happen. All right, thanks, guys. Okay, thanks. We'll take our next question from Christopher Venegas with Boxeo TV. Chris? Uh, hi, good afternoon. Buenas tardes, Leo. Uh, this question is for Tank Davis and Floyd. Um, do you guys think? that San Antonio is all going to be rooting for Leo Santa Cruz? Or, you, or, or what do you think? Who has the, the home field advantage? And, well, and the fight ended up in San Antonio. Well, I'm glad, you know, early on, I was able to take Tank over to take, – take him over to other places. Like I said, these are the things that we talk about. And one of the things I spoke with Tank about is the fans can't fight for you. So we just want the fans there, the boxing fans there. If it's for Leo, then – so be it. If it's for Tank, so be it. We just want fans in there because uh, this is probably going to be extremely boring without without no fans. And I, I can't say boring, but it's going to be a lot more exciting with fans because none, none, you can't even put the word boring with none of these fighters. Leo, like I said, he got a high bio, and he's a, a tough competitor. And, of course, it's crazy that I, I don't know why both these guys right now should be ranked somewhere in the top ten, pound for pound, in my opinion. So – as um, far as uh, the fans, um, we're going to be down in San Antonio. So, you know, I, I know a lot of, you know, Hispanics in San Antonio. So most likely they're going to be rooting for Leo. You Leo, know, ¿tú be Leo, ¿tú qué piensas de San Antonio? ¿Crees que toda la afición va a estar de parte de tu lado? Uh, yo la verdad pienso que sí va a haber mucha gente mía, este, mucha hispana allá. Pero también este, sé que Tank Davis es, este, trae muchos fans, mucha gente lo sigue, este, le gusta su estilo de pelea. So yo pienso que también mucha gente lo va a venir a, a apoyar a él. He estado mirando que hay muchos que lo van a apoyar a él. So yo pienso que va a ser este, muy pareja la, la audiencia. Y pues eso, como dice, este, eso es bueno para los dos, este, que haya apoyo para los dos y que nomás que nos vengan a apoyar para dar una gran pelea. I, I think the, the fans is going to be like 50-50, you know, because Tank, he's a great fighter, great skills. A lot of Hispanic, they want to see him fight too. So I think the fans, you know, it's not going to matter, but I think it's going to be like 50-50 fans uh, for both of us. Gracias. Yeah. That's great. Thank you, Leo. Um, all right, we got time for a couple more here. Let's go to Sean Zetel with Fight Hype. Sean, go ahead. Hey, champs. Um, just wanted to start with uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Uh, Leo, you know, uh, the, the one fight we saw from you with Carl Frampton in the rematch, you really boxed a lot and used your legs. Is that kind of the game plan you're going to have for Tank at least in the first half of the fight and the second half, go back to that aggressive style? Or are you just going to maybe even try to box all 12? Uh, what do you think, Leo? Well, the truth, you know, uh, we, we have to. We have to fight like that. We have to fight from the outside because we know Tank could hit. We know if he catches me, he could hurt me. So we're going to try to box, uh, you know, all 12 rounds. But you know me. I try to give the fans a great fight. So I think I'm going to try to go in, brawl with him, you know, give a great fight, an exciting fight, you know, back and forth, throwing punches. But if I feel that, you know, I could take his punches, I'm going to stay there and, you know, make it a fight. But if I see he could, you know, he hits hard that he could hurt me, I'm going to be smart and you just got to fight a perfect fight to, to go out there and just, you know, make it to a 12 round. Mm -hmm. And Gervonta, and um, I know Floyd, in working with you this camp, he's, 
he's always preaching about boxing skills. And even though the power is there, you know, try to win every round boxing. But at, at the end of the day, um, no one's went the distance with you since you become a champion. Will this be any different? Do you think he won't be able to take the power when it's all said and done? Um, I just, you know, I, I can't say what he could take, you know, um, until we get in there, you know. So I'm just more focused on, you know, putting on a great show, you know, giving the fans, you know, a, a exciting fight, you know. Um, and once again, the fans won, you know, people that, you know, um, turn in on pay-per-view win, you know. And, um, I'm just blessed to be here. I'm happy to be here. And I just want to give a, you know, a, um, a great performance. That's why I'm working so hard and can't, you know, just to, you know, give my pre appreciation back to my team for putting me on this platform, you know. So um, I'm definitely working hard each and every day. And uh, come October 31st, you, you definitely don't want to miss it. And, and lastly, Floyd, um, you know, in, in working with Tank, can you share with us anything you've given him in, in dealing with a fighter like Santa Cruz, who's aggressive, throws 100 punches around. I know you deal, dealt with guys like Maidana, who did some of those things. Could you share with us, you know, any of the tips you gave Tank for this fight with Santa Cruz? Well, you know, you was in training camp, so you had a chance to, um, Sean, you was in training camp, so you had a chance to, of course, uh, be there. You know, I've been knowing you since you was uh, uh, young, because, you know, I'm a lot older now, and I'm, you know, a veteran in the sport, but um, just, you know, um, I'm proud of both fighters just for stepping up, giving the fans this fight. You know, I can't, you know, uh, I get, I'm, all, I'm always giving Tank a lot of advice. And the advice that I'm always going to give him is some advice that is not for everybody because everything ain't for everybody. And the advice that I give him, I can't reveal it. Just like, what's the game plan? When, it, when you guys ask, you know, what's the game plan? Uh, you think that I got to where I got to given given my game plan. So every time when I went out there and I, I spoke to the media, you know, as well as the, uh, I mean, like when I spoke to the media and the people when they wanted to know my game plan, I never really gave my game plan because you don't give your game plan. You know, your game plan is for yourself. You guys will eventually see the game plan. And, but um, uh, like, even like me as a fighter, I was just very, very versatile when I was fight when I was fighting. And, I, and a lot, what a lot of people don't know is Leo is versatile because Leo showed one time that he, can, that he can box on the move. And even like Tank, a lot of people don't know that Tank boxing skills is, is really better than his power. Mm -hmm. He just didn't have to use his boxing skills, but Tank can really, really box his ass off. And so when we're in a boxing gym, Sean, as you've seen me tell Tank a lot of times, Stop always resorting just to your power and use your boxing skills. And that's what Tank did in this, in this training camp. Thanks so much, guys. Hey, thanks, Sean. We'll go to uh, Jeremy Herridges with fansided.com. We have time for just a couple more. Go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for, for taking the time. Uh, Trevanta, uh, kind of piggybacking off of what uh, Sean said, during your experience with Floyd, working with Floyd, uh, being mentored by Floyd, what would you say is the single most important thing that Floyd's taught you, either in or out of him? Save my money, invest. It's not even really about boxing. You know, it just pointers on life and things like that. You know, boxing, that comes after. You know, so basically just life pointers, you know, me coming up under him. You know, um, he giving that, giving me that one-on-one -on -one talk. You know, even before, you know, um, me being a world champion or even signing to be, uh, be um, what middle of promotion. You know, it took a little time for me to, um, uh, to actually sign the paper and things like that. And he was already preaching to me and taking me, you know, places, you know, that I'd never been. You know, I remember him taking me all over the world, you know, and him just giving me game and things like that. You know, when we say game, it's like teaching me the ropes, you know. So I'm um, definitely appreciative, appreciative, uh, appreciative for, uh, you know, having one of the best, well, the best in my corner, you know. So uh, I think God blessed me with that, you know. So that's why I say I have a lot of um, edge over a lot of fighters, young fighters that's coming up right now because they don't have that right now, you know. Um, as far as, you know, um, fighting and things like that, you know, um, I'm just here to give them a great fight and 
and uh, put on a great performance. Floyd, uh, obviously considering your, your career and your experience and your wisdom within boxing, um, it's one thing to say that Gervonta has potential. It's another thing to articulate how high that potential is. How high is Gervonta's potential in your eyes? I've told him this before. Um, fighters can be their own worst enemy. Um, a lot of times what I like to tell them is this. Um, and, I, and I'm always real with him because I care about him. I say, you know, we got to really, really, I said boxing is something that's not done just eight to 10 weeks. Boxing is a lifestyle. So I want you to, even when you're not fighting or sparring in the gym, make sure you're running. Uh, just, you know, uh, health is your wealth. So I want, I want him still running and also going to the gym, hitting the bag, just maintaining the weight. You know, showing that he's very uh, responsible as a young man. So, um, and also what I tell him is this, uh, like the same thing uh, that I did, uh, smart investments, you know, because inside that ring, he could do it all. He could do it all. And a lot of times, uh, and, and what's so crazy is you guys haven't seen the best Kang Davis. And I'm just being honest. Um, Sean um, had a chance to be in a boxing gym and a lot of different people had a chance to be in a boxing gym and watch him at this camp. And this camp was so great because this camp was great because he had so many different looks. He had a lot of pressure fighters. He had fight, combination fighters. He had guys that counterpunch. He had big guys. He had small guys, which is great. He had guys, um, what do you, I think he was boxing middleweights. He's boxing middleweights. He's boxing junior middleweights. He's boxing waterweights. He was boxing featherweights. I mean, so all this plays a major part in his career. And he's going up against one of the best. And I want to tell Leo Santa Cruz, you are one of the best fighters out there, Leo. Thank and I'm proud of you. And and I want to and I want to commend you on making just putting your money up, Leo, because Leo called me one day. Uh, we was talking on the phone, this is years ago, and said, you know what? Um, do anybody got a Lamborghini for sale? I said, well, you know, I got more than one Lamborghini. He said, do you want to sell? I said, absolutely. And Leo uh, cashed it out, all cash. So um, it's obvious he's putting his money away. And um, just my advice to both fighters, um, Invest, yeah. invest. So you guys will end up like a lot of these other athletes and entertainers. Um, and that's what that's that's the best thing about my career. It's not what I did inside the ring. It's what I did outside the ring. So because I'm I'm able to still live the same life. And um, Tank, you already know, I'm going to always stay on top of you uh, to be the best that you can be. And um, you show the people that you got boxing skills, not just power. And um, both of you guys go out there October 31st and give everybody uh, a treat. Uh, you know, we're not going we're not going to trick them. We're going to give them a treat on Halloween. And I'll be in San Antonio um, loving it. I think that's a great place to end it. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Well said, Jeremy. Uh, appreciate uh, all the questions from the press. I know there are a few more in queue. We can work with you on the PR side to, to address more as the promotion goes forward. But for now, we'll turn it over to Brian Custer to uh, wrap things up. Brian? Okay. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, Floyd, thank you. Uh, Leonard, thank you. Tom Brown, uh, thank you. And members of the press, thank you for all joining us. Folks, it all goes down Halloween night. Grab your Halloween costume. Come on out to the Alamo Dome uh, because you've got champion versus champion. And if you can't be there, you can watch it on Showtime Pay-Per-View. That is October 31st. It's a Saturday, live on Showtime Pay-Per-View, 9 p.m. Eastern. That is 6 o'clock Pacific time. And those of you in San Antonio, those of you traveling, uh, want to come out to San Antonio, you can get your tickets through Ticketmaster.com. The best fighting the best 
You've got the four-division world champion in Leo Santa Cruz. You've got the three-time world champion in Gervonta Tank Davis. Thank you for joining us. We will see you October 31st at the fight on Showtime Pay-Per-View. Poverty on my blocks by the masses. Hate the training camps by the classes. Just to escape and see something better. Got me working hard as hell, stepping out my level. Get this money, bring my homies right about the ghetto. Riding big trucks, only for the big bucks to settle. They say you got to see a little bit of hell to get you some heaven. So just imagine how I got where I'm stepping. Yeah. Cause life is good.